Welcome back to another IT Security Labs video and today we are going to be completing Giddy from Hack the Box. This machine is going to teach us some Windows enumeration, how to exploit a Windows machine and also learn a little bit about how this machine can be hardened. So it's a Windows system, rated medium. I went ahead and found it and started the machine. Okay, so the first thing is we go and um, make sure that we are connected. So I'll go to my Kali machine. Let's go to VPN, open VPN. This time we're connecting to hack the box. Uh, you need to have downloaded the open VPN connector for yourself. Otherwise I'm connected here. And then next, let's go ahead and see if we are connected by doing a simple ping. As you can see, we have our pings are working. Let's do an nmap scan to make sure that we have actually open ports. And this is going to look for top 1000 ports. I'm just going to do something like this very quick. Since this is hack the box, I already know that I need to add this IP address to Etsy host and name it giddy.hdb. So here I have giddy.hdb added to Etsy host with that IP address. You need to add this entry using your text editor. So that's the IP address. And our nmap is running. Actually, it's just done. We'll go back here. Let's check what ports did we find. We found port 80, which was open, running HTTP. So it's Windows for sure. We also have HTTPS for, in this case, a website. That's on 443 and also 80. RDP is open, so once we get credentials, we can try to sign in. And the machine name is Giddy, so we actually have a few things. So right away, let's go and visit the website, see what's actually happening there. Don't like the box. We see a cute picture here. We can save this picture and look through it. So they just save the image. Yeah, sure, on the downloads. Uh, view page source to see if we're loading anything interesting. I don't see anything there. So what we can do is we can run a go buster or dare buster here to see what other subdirectories are available. Okay, so I'm running go buster against 10, 10, 10, 104, and I'm using 50 threads. This is going to be on the HTTPS section. So we can see what other subdirectories are there. Right away, we see that we have slash remote. All right, we have a PowerShell web access. I don't know who, who does this in the real world, but it looks like you can connect using computer name or URI. We can try to abuse this to see if it will actually try to reach out to us or not. But for now, we don't have credentials. We don't have a username and password. So this is kind of hard to see what we can do. We can also check the page source to see how this is running, but this is just the PowerShell console UI, and this is the script that is actually giving us that access. So we need credentials for this URI. Go back. Oh, it's erroring out. Whatever is happening here, go back is erroring out, which is fine, probably because I'm running too many threads. But I also see that we have slash remote, which was 302. We have the 301 on slash M. VC. So let's go check that one out. Okay, so coming back here to go to slash MVC. All right, we see it looks like a product. This is powered by myasp.net. Okay, so it's a ASP.net app. It is search and it looks like it's a catalog. When we see things like this, we are looking for common web application vulnerabilities like local file inclusion, SQL injection, and things like that. So let's start clicking around. And we are paying attention to the URL here. When you see something is equals to something like this, right away we need to check to see like, is this injectable or is there local file inclusion? So we can mess with that. If we go to the search here and if we say test and hit search, zero products. Okay, so we can also try this one, like one dash or admin. Let's try that and see if it errors out. Okay, this one doesn't error out. Okay, 
but if I go here on the product list here, let's put one and a little dash. Oh, perfect. So this is erroring out. This shows me that we try to run a command. Specifically, we're seeing some information like, okay, we do have a user here where this application is running. So this might be vulnerable to SQL injection based on this alone. So let's put 18 here. Okay, so we see that. We can add an O, one is equals to one. See if we can just run that. One is equals to one. This should dump a bunch of things. Oh yeah, this works. So when you add O, one is equals to one, notice that it dumped every table. So what that means is we said, show me a product ID of 18 or anything that is true. And we see that it actually works. So uh, with this, I think we're on the right path. So this looks to work. Let's look up Microsoft C. We know that this is a Microsoft. And I know that I can do the exec commands. Not so RICE with SQL injection. That looks interesting. That's from four years ago. Okay. So here, this person is using Burp Suite. I'm too lazy today. I don't want to use Burp Suite. I want to do it from the browser. They're using Burp Suite to capture the request. I'm performing union select, and they're using command shell. I like that. So we can do it that way. Trying to dump a password or anything like that. Since this is a Windows machine with SQL injection, we can try to force this machine to authenticate back to us using SMB. And every time Windows does that, they will send the user's password hash, I mean the NTLM hash. So since I can dump everything here, we can try to see if this will work with 18. Then let's put a semicolon, since this is how Windows does things. Then we can run X exec master x tree. Let's see if we can point to our Kali. Okay, impact SMB server. This one is called share. All right, so we are setting an impact SMB server. Let's see if it will just connect to here. Sure, we should see something on our server. Okay, so I don't know what was happening with my responder, <laughs> but impact SMB server is giving me uh, what I need. Here is the users NTLM hash. So let me stop it. So we did our SQL injection from the browser using that. And this works mostly because it's a Windows machine. So when you see Windows systems, I'll try this here, to make sure that it works. Okay, so now that we have um, an NTLM hash, let's copy it. CD to slash TMP. Now I know Stacy. I'll just name it Stacy. Um, control X, Y, enter. The most important part is figuring out how to crack that hash. And we're just going to use John. Dash dash word list. Uh, equals to such user share word list rowq.txt and we're going to point it to a file called stacy and this is going to use john to try to see if we can crack that oh that was quick okay so the password is in rowq.txt expected for try hack me or hack the box so the username is stacy and this is the password so let's grab that password go back here i think we had a slash remote Remove all that. Slash remote. Specify Giri, the computer name of Giri, and sign in. Don't save. I really don't like this. <laughs> so I hope I can get out of here. Uh, but let's do a dir. Submit. I see that we have a unified video in the documents, whatever this is. Why usually this is not a Windows program by default. It has to be installed. So 
that must be significant. But let's go to um this LS desktop. Okay. User the text. Can I copy paste from here? That's gonna be the million dollar question. Yes, we can. So we got the user flag, but this is really not an interactive shell at all from the sense of we need a remote shell back to us. This is us still just interacting with whatever they give. All right, so in order for us to escape constraint mode, we can run this command here. All right, so in order for us to escape, let's check first. It's in, it is in constraint mode, because this here will show us whether or not it's in constraint mode. So there's a few things that we can do here to make sure that we escape this. One of them is we can just look up escaping PowerShell constraint mode. Okay, so we can down, downgrade. Let's see if we are allowed to downgrade. Okay, we cannot do that. All right, this is proving to be interesting. Okay, so let's verify that Windows Defender is running as well by t typing PS. Uh, it should be like the MP. All right, yeah, MS MP engine right here. So we do have Defender enabled and also PowerShell constrained language mode. All right, so a couple of things here. I got stuck here trying to like escape Windows PowerShell constrained language mode and also trying to figure out things. But let's go back to my service, that Unify Video service. Let's say Windows Unify Video Previsc. Let's see what the internet have. So if we, we have Exploit DB, so we need to know the version of that thing. Local privilege escalation here. Okay, I cause unified edge video in program data. Should be able to see these. Okay, so it looks like we can try that. Upon start and stop of the service, you can try to load the executable. Okay. So let's go to program data. Okay, say so there. Okay, we have unified dash video. Let's check the permissions. Let's check the permissions. Um, building administrator. Okay, so we are running this as administrator. Okay, so what is the exploit? Okay, the unify video for Windows is put in program data unify video by default, and it's also shipped with a service called that there is a space in the naming so it's it executes that is placed in the same directory and runs under nt authority account however the default permissions for the unified video folder are c program data and are not explicitly overwritten which allows all users even unprivileged ones to append and write files okay so here they're telling us how to do by copying an arbitrary file called taskq.exe to c so we need a file called taskq.exe that needs to be in program data, unify video. Okay. Then we restart the service and it will run our taskq.exe. But we do have Windows Defender. I'm going to try something new today using Golang or Go. Let's just use Go to create a binary, like a reverse shell. And then once we use Go to create a reverse shell, compile it and see if we succeed. Let's just name it revshell.go. This is a chance for us to practice. And then I'll use a template for a Golang reverse shell and I'll explain what this is doing. You can find this online or any of your AI tools will show you. But it's, we're just using the main packet importing, but the main function is right here. We, it's called reverse. Probably smart to change its name. It's going to go to my attacker machine on port 443, okay? So I need to make sure that port 443 is open. Okay. So we are not listening. Netcat-LVNP on 443. There we go. We have a listener. Okay. So now that I know that this works, this is the Golang reverse shell. 
that we will be running. Hopefully it works out of the box. Control X, Y, enter. And to compile it, to compile it, I'm saying, hey, the architecture is going to be Windows, MD64, Go Build. We want Windows GUI. Uh, we don't want a GUI though. We probably don't want the graphical user interface. Okay, I really don't want this here. Just want it to be output rev.exe. Let's see if this works. All right, let's see. We now have a rev.exe. So rev.exe should call back to us on our listener here. And we're just using that to see if we can bypass Windows. Was Rust and Golang seem to do it, like simple stuff like that. Okay, now we need to upload that. So let's open a Python dash M, HTTP server on 80. Then let's upload it. All right, so to upload this file, we say set you to upload this file from my Kali attacker called refshell.exe and put it in C program data unify taskq.exe. We found that information from the exploit DB file. They want it to be named exactly that. So we will do it the same exact way. So right here, this is where they say it to do it that way. So let's verify that we can we have our Python simple HTTP server running. Now let's go here and run from our PowerShell. Set you till since it's a native tool, it should still work. Let's hit submit. It's running. If you go to the Unify video folder and do a dir, we should see our task queue is here and the size shows that it was actually done okay so we are in business we have task queue uploaded we don't need this anymore now let's check 443 is listening now we just need to find a way how do we restart that service oh yeah shift by, by default with the, it's called ubiquity unify video so let's give them that name here single quotes Then we do a start service as well after this. Uh, we should have forced it. Start the service. Okay, let's see if we can start it now and submit. If everything works, we should get a, oh, there we go. We got a reverse shell. So that's all we needed to do is start and stop. Even though it says failed here, we did get our reverse shell back here using Golang ID. No, actually it's who am I? Okay, <laughs> we have a limited shell here. We need to probably upgrade this. So let's use what we had from Ref Shell online last time. Here's a PowerShell reverse shell. This is going to be on quad 4.3. Make it like that. Then let's come back here. Where is that? Who am I? Okay, so now this time let's run this. I hope I get a call back on quad 4.3. Yes, I did. This time we have a real PowerShell. See, users, enter, type, root, dot text. Second part with the limitations was a beast, but we were able to do it. So key takeaways, key takeaways here, we were able to get a Golang binary reverse shell to work. You can use perplexit or any of the AI tools and just say, write me a reverse shell in Golang. And that's what I did. Uh, I didn't write the whole thing. And then afterwards, it bypassed Windows Defender. In addition to that, we didn't have to deal with PowerShell constrained language mode. And I kind of worked on that. If you like this content, please remember to like, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.